Saw my math homework. So we're starting a video series on fifth grade AZ merit test prep questions. And we're gonna just chunk it by category for the most popular types of questions for fifth grade test prep questions, really for any state test. So today we're gonna deal with, which, with the questions that say, hey, which is larger when you're multiplying? And they always involve fractions. So let's get into it. Let's start with a little bit of background, what we need to know about fractions. So you know, when we have a fraction, we have one over six, let's say that's our fraction, we have part to whole, right? And we know that if our part is smaller than our whole, our fraction's less than one, and if we have something like seven over six, then that is greater than one, right? Okay, but there is one type of question that comes up in fifth grade that people struggle with a little bit, and it's when they ask you, well, one-sixth is equal to which of the following? And they tend to say something like A, uh, 6 divided by 1, B, 6 minus 1, C, 1 divided by 6, or D, 1 minus 6. So let's talk about it. This little fraction bar here, 1 over 6 we like to say, well guess what? It really is a 1 divided by 6. But way back when, some old dudes decided that this was really ugly, and it is. So the division bar became, they just had a shorthand for like this little slash that kind of became the division bar. So this little slash was the same thing, okay? So this slash was the same thing as our division symbol. It was just a shorter, quicker way to write it. And let's hand it to them, okay? Way back when, this is awful. Nobody wants to see that. So this is a much nicer to, way to write one divided by six. It's a much shorter, quicker way to write it. So when they ask you one six is equal to, you know what it is. It's one divided by six. This fraction bar is a division bar, okay? And another thing we've already talked about, how to tell if it's less than one, greater than one. That becomes very important because they're gonna start asking you uh, questions like this. Let's see if I can find one. Okay, they're going to start asking you questions that look like this. They're going to say, select all expressions less than 3,155. And then you look at these and you say, okay, well, they're all 3,155 multiplied by something. And you might think, well, multiplication, none of them are going to be less. I'm always getting bigger when I multiply. And that's why they're asking this, because you don't always get larger, right? Can you multiply and not end up with a product bigger than the number you started with? Well, sure. We've known about this since the first time we learned about multiplying. First thing you learned about, what did they teach you? Your ones times tables, because they're super easy. Maybe they taught zero first, but okay. Five times one is five. We multiplied. We sure didn't get bigger. We stayed the same. And since I mentioned it, five times zero, anything times zero, is zero. So we multiply five by a number, and we didn't get bigger. We got smaller. But we want to talk about different types. I said they'd involve fractions. So what is 10 times 1 half? Okay, let me ask it another way. What's 1 half of 10? 1 half of 10? Nobody has to think about that. That's 5. So we multiplied, and we wound up with a number that was less than the number we started with. And if you don't believe me, look at this. We really did multiply. 10 is 10 over 1 times 1 over 2. When we multiply, we multiply straight across. We wind up with 10 divided by 2, which is 5. So even though we got 10 over 2, which is really 10 divided by 2, and we had to divide to simplify, this was a multiplication problem. When you multiply by something that is less than 1, you get something smaller than what you started with. So that is the key. Not that you multiply by a fraction, but it's that you multiplied by something less than one. And that's our rule, okay? If you multiply by one, you get the same number you started with. You multiply by something less than one, you get something less than you started with. And we don't really have to go over it, but we all know, you multiply by something more than one, you get more than you started with, okay? So that's what we really have to look at when we look at these problems. So let's go for it. All right, where'd that problem go? Okay, here it is. Where did it, whew, sorry about that. 
All right, so let's look at these. Select all expressions that are less than 3,155. So the um, all of your state tests, fifth grade included, love to do select all. Anytime you see select all, you're gonna choose more than one. If only one answer was the correct answer, it would be multiple choice. Okay, and now there might be this one-off time. If you're 100% sure that there's only one correct answer and it says select all, just choose the one. But more times than not, if it says select all, there's gonna be a bunch that are correct, or at least more than one. Okay, so we wanna select all the expressions that are less than what we started with, 3,155. All right, let's look at what we got. Because now we know all we have to do is say, what are we multiplying by? Are we multiplying by something more than one or less than one? All right, so let's look at this first one. They give us 3,155 times 2 over 1. Well, what in the world is 2 over 1? Well, 2 over 1, if you just take a whole number and put it over 1, you've written it as a fraction. This is really 3,155 times 2, right? That's what this is. 3,155 times 2. And what is that? I don't know, and I don't care. All I know is it's going to be greater than 3,155, so I don't want that. Okay? All right, let's look at the next one. 3,155 times 4 out of 5. Okay, so 4 fifths. 4 fifths. My part 4 is less than my whole 5, so I am multiplying by something less than 1, so my result will definitely, left, <laughs> definitely be less than what I started with. Sorry about that. So that's good. I'm taking a number, multiplying by less than one, I'm gonna get less than what I started with. Okay, next one. Okay, 3,155 times 3 thirds. Right, they must be playing games with us because who writes 3 thirds? And what is 3 thirds? Your part's three. Your whole's three. If the part and the whole equal, it's just one. But they're not gonna ask you 3,155 times one. They know you know that, but that's what this really is. It's just 3,155 times one. Is it going to be less than 3,155? Nope, it's going to be equal to it. Okay, so we have 3,155 times a fraction. Don't get into that habit of, oh, it's a fraction, going to be less than, you can't fool me. Make sure your fraction is less than one. My part is one, my whole is six, one six is for sure less than one. All right, you can circle it. Moving on, 3,155 times fraction, automatically less than one? Nope. Not automatically less than what we started with because look what we got. 25 is our part, 17 is our whole. That's greater than 1. So we're going to end up with a number bigger than what we started with. That doesn't work. Okay, next one. 3,155 times 117 over 118. It is an ugly fraction. I will give you that. But is the numerator less than the denominator? Is my part less than my whole? Yep, I only have 117. Total is 118, so there's a little itty bitty part I don't have, meaning this fraction is less than one, meaning when I multiply this by that, I will get a number less than what I started with. Go ahead and circle it. And then the last one, 3,155 times 5 elevenths. Well, after all the others we've done, this just seems easy. 5 elevenths, less than one. We know that. If it was equal to one, it would be 11 elevenths. If it was more than one, that top number would be greater than 11. It's not. This is less than one. When I multiply, I'm going to get less than what I started with. So those are your answers, all right? They can't fool you anymore. If you're multiplying, say, am I multiplying by a number greater than one, less than one, equal to one? Just look at those fractions and say, is my part less, greater, or equal to my whole? All right, let's look at another one that they ask. Ooh, sorry about the shake. All right, here's another one they give. This is one problem, remember. Okay, you have to answer all of these questions to get credit for one problem. They can be tiresome, but they're not... I mean, they're not excruciating. It's four easy questions. It says select one phrase that describes the value of each expression. And what are the phrases we're dealing with? Well, we notice that each expression has a three times something. And we want to know, is the result going to be greater than three? Is it going to be equal to three? Is it going to be less than three? And by now, we know to be greater than three, you have to multiply three by something more than one. To be equal to three, you have to multiply it by something equal to one. And to be less than three, guess what? You have to multiply it by something less than one. Okay, three times one half. We don't even have to think about that. We know one half is less than one. So what's our answer gonna be? We multiply less than three. Three times one and one fourth. Well, again, I think they gave it away, right? A mixed number, always gonna be bigger than one, which means when I multiply three by it, 
Gonna get a number bigger than three. Three times six, six. All right, six, six, who gives six, six? They love this. All day long they give you six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight. It's still just one. Three times one equal to three. They cannot fool you with that anymore. Three times, three halves. Okay, this is where they think they're gonna get you. Oh, those kids that know if you multiply by a fraction, it's less than one. But you guys know the fraction has to actually be less than one, right? So three times three halves, three times three halves, three halves, three is greater than two, three halves is greater than one. So guess what? Your product, greater than three. They cannot fool you anymore. If you multiply by a fraction and that fraction is greater than one, you're still going to get a bigger product than what you started with. The only time you get a product that is less than what you started with is when your fraction is less than one. All right, so I hope that helped. If you got any questions, pop them in the comments section and be sure to look for the rest of the videos on fifth grade math. Thanks for watching.